Hey guys, welcome back to Build Something Cool. Today we're going to talk about aligning and leveling a lathe. Now, that's actually two different things. Some people get them mixed up because some lathes can be aligned but can't be leveled. Other lathes can be leveled but they can't be aligned. I know it sounds confusing, but I'm going to help clarify that. And we got a great lathe to work on today. This is that weird Italian lathe I picked up here in San Francisco. And what I like about this lathe is it has all the functionality of what most, most lathes have for alignment. So I can level the feet, I can twist the bed, but one of the things a lot of people don't talk about is a gear head. And a gear head, a lot of them can be realigned this way in their orientation to the bed. If you have a belt driven lathe, those can't be aligned because of the belt system interfering with the bed. But this lathe is gonna allow us to cover a lot of things. Now, I did a video back oh, when I lived in Idaho on how to level a lathe without using levels. I actually used a plumb bob. I'll put a link to it so you guys can see what I looked like seven years ago for one. And just a different process because you don't have to have these really nice levels to do that. Now, first of all, before you can level your lathe, you do have to clean it. You want to come through, you want to vacuum it up, you want to get rid of all the dust, and then you want to take precision ground flat stones, go over all the ways. You want to make sure there's no high spots or any dings that have been kicked up. One of the things I did for this video is I've taken the compound off because I really don't need the compound. Something else you got to be aware of, if there's any high spots here, it's going to throw you off. So you have to stone this, make sure it's flat. I checked it, measured it. I was in a 10,007 inch, so that's just fine. And I want to show you different ways to align it and also level it and why. Even though they both use levels, they're two different techniques. So a lathe is a very precise machine and we need to get an alignment. We need to make sure that there's no twists in the bed and that's what we're doing by lining the bed. But we can also level it and there's kind of a catch-22 there. You can get it level but you can't necessarily get an alignment. And But some machines you can get level but it'll never be in alignment or I should say that it's always in alignment even after you level it no matter what. So let me explain that. So if you take like a Hardinge lathe, some of them, the head and the tail stock, they're actually on three points, where most lathes are on four, maybe six, maybe eight. This one here actually has six points that the bed sits on so I can twist it and level it. But like on Hardinge and also some South Bend lathes, the head sits on two points and the tail sits on a third point, so it's a tripod. Like on a South Bend lathe, one of the things I was told is it was set up to be put on ships because the deck of a ship is always twisting and moving. So by having it on a third point, it keeps everything, what do I want to say, stable. There's two reasons I consider leveling lathe. One is if you're running a flood coolant that it goes in the right direction. The other reason you level it to make sure it hasn't been bumped or moved. And that's kind of one of the things I like to be able to do is check my lathe periodically to make sure that everything is right from when it was originally. So I've got two different levels here. One will drive you crazy. One will just drive you a little crazy. A stare at 98 is accurate to a thousandth of an inch every 12 inches. So what that means is every mark you see here is a thousandth of an inch. So this means this is up a thousandth of an inch over 12 inches. This is a great level for aligning machines. Then you can get into like this Polish one here where every one of those lines is a half a thousandth. This thing will drive you crazy. So I don't suggest using this one. Something else you want to check on your levels is it flat and one way you can do that is you just shift it from one side and see where the bubble stops move it to the other side if it stops in the same point it's good if it's concaved or convex it won't give you an accurate reading now don't freak out if it's not level you can actually just simply put a mark right here and every time you put it down you just line it up to the same mark these bubbles are not always the same length and the lengths actually change due to the temperature of your shop. One thing you have to remember, everything needs to be at the same temperature. So let's say you're trying to level this lathe in the winter, but you keep your metrology tools in a nice warm shop. This is not acclimated to this environment. So before you level, you want to make sure that you get your level out, put it on your lathe, allow that heat or temperature changes to equalize so when you work together with them you're not having a problem because this is what will happen is the level is warm and the lathe is cold and I just start to go to work I'm gonna end up fighting the level because the level is gonna be cooling down it's gonna be changing its shape during this whole process I'm gonna be going back and forth back and forth and I'm not gonna understand why it's not leveling well it's because the level is actually trying to acclimate to the new temperature but you do want to use 
as accurate a level as you own. Now something else I want to talk about before I get too far into leveling feet, I want to talk about the proper height for a lathe and I want to talk about it in the terms of what I like. A lot of lathes are really low. For me the right height of a lathe is this handle at the bottom because it's the handle I use the most. I want to have just a slight bend in my elbow when I turn it. I don't want it to be where I have to bend over. I don't have to be where I'm standing up here and trying to use it. The right height for me is just right there. So let me take you down to the leveling feet and let's talk about that process next. We're down here looking at the leveling feet and you'll notice there's actually six leveling feet, has four on the head, two on the tailstock end. So we're going to level on these two here and the two on the back and then we're going to bring up these at the headstock. Now there is kind of a controversy is how high do we bring those up and that's the question because if we bring it up, does it take the bed and bend the bed up or bend the bed down or does it actually nod the head? And I think it really depends on the type of machine you have. So this one here has a gap bed in it, therefore the casting is here is a lot thinner. So if you're going to raise that up, technically the head is going to nod. But this machine is so rigid because of the chip tray and also the bed being put together this way, there's actually almost no flex in this entire system. No, no, we're going to try to test this. We're going to see what happens because if I can nod the head, what makes that great is I can also take a shaft when it's coming out of here and nod that and get it so it is coplanar with these V-ways. Here's a test I've been wanting to do for a long time. So we've got the six adjusting feet and we've got, and we're only sitting on four. So what happens when we raise up the sixth and really twist this. So this is set up to test to see how much bow happens in the bed now. This is not a super accurate test, but what it's gonna do is give me an idea. We've got a test bar here, piece of aluminum that's probably about four feet long, and it's setting on two points. And then in the center here, we have a gauge. Now this gauge is set up, I think that is uh, 0 0.00005, so that's 20 millionths of an inch if I get that correctly. So what that means, if you take a one millionth of an inch and stack it 20 times, that's what each one of the marks on this indicator is. So it's a very refined indicator. If we come over, we can see the 10 and the 20. So that 10 is actually about a thousandth of an inch. What I'm going to do now, I've got the feet totally retracted. Now I'm going to change them. I'm going to raise them up and take all the pressure off these two and put all on the back and see if we get some sort of change in this system. There's hardly any deviation in this. So my setup, like I said, isn't super rigid, but at least it's given me a ballpark to see what's happening. Okay, we're now set up for the next experiment. We're gonna to try to find out if this head is nodding when we adjust the leveling feet. So what we're really trying to do here is we've got a test bar out here. It goes out about eight inches. And what we're trying to do is figure out if there's a change in the distance from the bed to here. I have my dial indicator set up to kind of measure that. Now, this again isn't exact, but it's close enough. We're really just trying to do an experiment, see what's happening. Is the bed flexing or is the head nodding? Okay, it looks like we've got some deviation here. We've got about nine thousandths of deviations. Where we're at here, so definitely the head nods quite a bit when doing this. Let's talk about the alignment. This one here is a great candidate for showing you different leveling techniques because it sits on six different leveling feet. Most of them sit on four. Some of them actually sit on eight. Really long ones will actually have a foot in the middle of the bed. Where you end up putting your levels is going to be critical. So I have these one, two, three blocks set up on the flats and I put the level here. Well, if there's wear here, we're going to have a problem and there's usually more wear at the headstock than there at the tailstock. So when you're leveling it, it's actually not going to be level and you're going to get frustrated. So a better way to do it if you can, bring it over to this area here. And now when we move it, and if I level it here and there's wear in it, I'm going to be able to see it and it's going to be able to detect it it's for you. Now some, you don't have a flat surface to put a level on here and you'll never work or will it. What you can do is you can actually take blocks and put it right on top of your ways here, set your level there, and you can level it that way. To get the other side, well, you'll have to move the carriage and reveal the ways on the back to do that. So that's one technique. 
Now, I'm lucky that I'm going to set this up to where I'm consistent here. I can also turn my level at this point and also check for level. And all I'm after is a consistent area where that bubble is. You can check it over here. Now remember, if there's any debris under here, you're going to get a false reading. Very consistent. Let me take it to the other end. Okay, we're dead on consistent. So if this level was off, what I would do is I would go in and I'd keep adjusting the feet. Now this one actually is set up really well, but I'd keep going in, tweaking the feet. Now remember, when I raise up the back, we, we might add a little twist to it. So then we had to figure out, well, is this level? So we'll level this part of the bed, then we'll level this part, we'll check it. How is it this way? Then we keep working it. And it's just kind of a trial and error. Each time you go back to the leveling feet, you're moving it just a little bit less, a little bit less. Now, if you can also set up your wrenches to where you can just kind of kick them with your foot, slide it over, you'll find out it's a lot easier to do it that way. Now we're going to put a test piece in here and talk about how do we test that we have the bed in alignment. It's now time to talk about aligning the head. Some of you are going to be able to do what I'm going to be able to do, and some aren't. A gear head is usually separate from the bed, where if you have an older lathe like a south bend, where the head is actually sitting on the ways, you actually adjust it by changing the height of the feet. Now, not all gear heads can be adjusted. Like this here, this is a mock-up of what I have here. And this actually has a pivoting pin to where when you loosen the bolts, you have four bolts that hold it down, and then two in the back that are adjustment screws, and I'll show you those a little bit later. But some, this pin could be over here, can be in the back, it could be anywhere. And hopefully you have a pin because it makes it a lot easier to align now. I've set up this model to just give you a representation of showing you what really happens when you start moving the head around. Two gauges set up here, they're both accurate within a thousandth of an inch. So these are now both zero. If I move this one a full rotation, this one here only moves about a half a rotation. So what I have is about a one to two ratio. We need to understand that really well because if we're trying to change the diameter of this on both ends and get them to match, we have to understand that when we move this whole thing, this may move two inch or two thousandths of an inch, this will move one thousandths. So we have to understand how to compensate for the error and where the pivot point is. And the test bar is a heavy, thick piece of material. This is about two inches in diameter, and it's about eight inches long. It's a good diameter. Make sure you get the largest metal you can because you want to make sure it's rigid. And remember, we're not going to put a center on this because, well, that would defeat the purpose because we're trying to figure out how to get this lined up. Now, we've already leveled the whole machine, but that doesn't mean that it's an alignment. That's where we get tricky. We're level, but now we're trying to find out if we're in alignment. First thing I'm doing is I'm cutting out the center here so it's not interfering because I only need to know the information from this point to this point. So let's take a quick measurement to see how far out we are. This is going to be 9.5. 9 and this is zero. So we're off five-tenths of an inch. So we can bring that in. Now there's two ways we can bring it in, is we can adjust the head, which that's what I'm going to show you first. But I'll tell you, if you're within a half a thousandths over eight inches, you're pretty dead on. Now what I could also do right now is go back and adjust the leveling feet to do this. But I'm going to work on the head here. First of all, what we want to do is we want to set up a test indicator. So we can get an idea of how much movement we're really getting out of this. I'm going to use a Sterrett. It's accurate to 10 thousandths of an inch. Now we can control how much we're actually going to move everything. And I like to set up the indicator first before I loosen the head, and you'll see why in a little bit. Let's uh, loosen this up. Now what I want to do is I want to take each bolt, loosen, and then snug it back up. Check my gauge. So we've shifted just about a 10 thousandths. Now I've got two adjustment bolts right here that allow me to move the head in and out. And this is kind of a trial and error. So remember, we want the needle to turn clockwise. Let's turn it five tenths. Now I don't care where it's at at this point. I only care at where it is when I tighten it up. I've also found that it's important to have both of these bolts snug because 
They keep the whole head over time from moving. Here I want to come in at least 2007 inch. I'm struggling with getting a good cut. This handle's a little small for the weight and size of this carriage, but let's see what we've got here. 20.5. Okay, so we made it worse. <laughs> so I screwed up. I've actually made it worse than it was before. We're actually off about a thousandths. Now we're smaller on this end than this one. Well, that's just the challenge you go on. So I'm going to dance around with this for a while. Wow. I have to say I got really lucky on this. I got this all lined up in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five steps. Pretty good in about 20 minutes. I think that's a new record for me. I didn't think I could get it into alignment. We right now, um, I've read it a couple times. I'm coming out with about a half a tenth, so it's pretty amazing I've got this lined up. The bad news is, guys, I'm not going to do the leg leveling of this because I got this perfect. I don't want to mess with it. Once you got it, you don't mess with it. But you can check out Joe Pye. He did a great video on this. This old Tony. Also, Jason from Fireball Tool, and I'll put some links down below so you can check them out. So I don't know if you guys just noticed the the coffee cup here. These are now available plus t-shirts. So if you want to help support the channel, please go buy a mug and buy a t-shirt. All right, guys, until next time, go out in the shop, build something cool. Thanks.